Have you been shut down by Stripe and now are unable to get payment processing solutions because you are not a US resident? Well, today I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about how you can solve this problem and how to find reliable payment processing solutions for your online store. My name is Maria Spragas. I am the founder of Direct Payment, and I help thousands of seven and eight figure merchants figure out their payment processing so they can have reliable and stable payment solutions for their online store. First of all, if you have been shut down by Stripe, your number one thing here is really to find a payment solution so you can get your business up and running. I do want to explain a little bit how Stripe works because that will help you understand the difficulty in obtaining another payment solution for your store. Stripe is what we call a payment aggregator or a payment facilitator. A payment facilitator essentially applies for their own merchant account, gets different licenses, and then they get a merchant account and subdivide it to different merchants and allow them to use it for their stores. Now that allows Stripe, because they're the actual owner of the merchant account, to receive the money from your store and then deposit it to you wherever you're based, if you're in Europe, Australia, or whatever the case is. The difference between that and a merchant account provider is the merchant account provider, you are working directly with a bank. So that bank needs you to have a bank account in the US, needs you to have a company in the US, and for risk purposes, they may even need you to have a local director or somebody in the US that resides in the US that they can speak to should anything go wrong with your account. So obviously getting a merchant account for a US non-resident is quite difficult, especially if you don't have a company and a bank account. Actually, I should say if you don't have a company and a bank account in the US, you cannot get a US merchant account. It's just not going to be possible. So if you are in the situation where you're a US non-resident, then your options for payment solutions really are to find another payment facilitator. You can Google and you can ask around to find Payfax or payment aggregators, and that's what you should really stick with. And if your sales volume is under $25,000 a month, that's pretty much going to be your only option. There's not going to be any merchant account provider that are willing to take risks on a US non-resident account if the sales volume is under 25,000. Now, if you are in the situation where you're selling over $25,000 a month, you've been processing with Stripe for a little while and you're looking for another payment solution or Stripe is you know, putting some conditions on your account or holding your money and so forth, there may be a couple of solutions for you to get a merchant account if you follow these next couple of rules. First of all, you need to have a US based company and a US based bank account. Now it's fairly simple to get that. I mean, you can pretty much, you know, go online to find an online incorporator and they'll set you up within 24 to 48 hours. It's really not complex. In terms of the bank account, there are a lot of bank account options now that you can open online. I would recommend you try to get a local US bank instead of an online bank like Mercury and so forth, because there are some payment providers and merchant account providers that don't like to work with those, call them virtual banks or those online banks. They prefer for you working with an actual US based bank. I mean, if it's not possible for you to open up a, a bank account with, you know, one of the big US banks, then that could be an option. But keep in mind that that also limits your options of providers for a merchant account. Now, once you have that done, if you do have a trusted employee or a trusted friend or somebody that works for your company uh, and that is involved in even a small portion of your company, you can name that person as director. They don't have to have any ownership. They can be 0% owners. So long as they're willing to take an official role in your company, you can have them on your company register and that would help satisfy the requirement of having a US resident. Now for some people that's not possible. And like I said, if you have over $25,000 a month or more in volume, there are a few merchant account providers that are willing to look at these accounts. Now, again, there's a lot of restrictions and I won't go into all of that, but you have to have 25 K in volume. You have to have a company based in the U S and you have to have a bank account based in the U S in U S dollars. And ideally if you have a local resident, director that can vouch for the company and sign some documents. That's also a plus. Now you can reach out to my company, Direct Paynet. My team and I specialize in high risk accounts and we do help non-residents get merchant accounts in the US, but you do have to qualify, like I said, with the $25,000 a month or more in sales volume. One thing to bear in mind is that not all industries are accepted and the higher the risk, the less likely uh, that you'll find a provider. So now, if you're in a high risk arena, for example, you're selling supplements, 
business or coaching uh, or you're in the survival niche and so forth, it may be even more difficult because there are going to be more requirements. And the reason for that is because banks have to always protect their interests. So for example, if you are a non-resident and you have a ton of chargebacks and you decide to close your store down, close your business down. As a non-US resident, it is very difficult for the bank to collect funds from you. And that is the main reason that a lot of banks shy away from working with non-residents because on a legal standpoint, if something goes wrong, they have very little recourse into coming to the country that you live in and trying to start legal proceedings. It's very expensive for them to do it. They don't know the laws in the other countries, so they prefer to really have a representative in the US. So the higher your volume, the more likely you are to find a provider that's willing to work with you because obviously, as you know, money talks. So if you have, you know, seven figures in sales a month or more, there is going to be a bank willing to take the risk. And also keep in mind that when you are just starting, if you are a startup, then I really recommend that you work with PayPal or Stripe or Shopify payments and you build up a little bit of processing history. So you get at least three months, but ideally six months of processing history to be able to show to a merchant account provider that you can make sales, that you are profitable, that you do have a business that's of value. So if you are a startup, don't despair. There are plenty of payment facilitators outside of Stripe and PayPal. Just Google it, look for some in your region. You will find somebody that's willing to work with you. And then once you get to a certain level of success with your store, $25,000, $50,000 a month or more, then you could look for a U.S. merchant account in order to facilitate your payments for your U.S. customers. Now, why does a U.S. merchant account actually help your store? First, it'll increase your conversions because a domestic bank processing domestic transactions will always convert better. And number two, if you have chargeback levels that are within an acceptable range, you will find better pricing and more competitive terms for your account than you would with Stripe or any of the big box payment facilitators. So if you're processing over $25,000 a month and you're a non-US resident, but want to go ahead and open a US merchant account, comment down below or reach out to myself or somebody from my team and we'd be happy to help you. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more amazing content.